Today I am going to be talking about something that the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart and I want to talk about as I've written it there and which I see you can see there we rest or not we rest or not that is what the Holy Spirit laid on my spirit and I pray that he will also speak to you just like he spoke to my spirit and to my heart I am going to be using our reference scripture and chapter I am going to be looking and using Ephesians chapter chapter 6 and verse 12. You know, I'm going to start from verse 10 and you know, I'm going to be looking at the armor of God, but I'm going to be reading Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, but my main, main one is going to be verse 12. So I, I, I just want to say, get out your Bibles. You know, I know it's, it's for some people where they are, it might be cold, it might be warm. Maybe you are holding a glass of juice, a glass of water. But I want to encourage you to get out your Bible and, you know, get a pen, get a book, write these things down. They are very important when you are in your private time. You know, when you have your own private time, when you are studying the word of God, I believe the Holy Spirit usually brings so much revelation. So when we look at this scripture here, it says in verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You know what I love about this scripture? It is not telling us to be strong strong in our in our own might or in our own strength or in our own understanding or in our own knowledge why am i bringing this scripture and this topic right now I believe that the times we are in as a child of God, you can sense the times we are in. I believe that every one of us, and I believe even Dr. Arthur on Fridays, he has been teaching about revelations and he has been teaching about these important times that we are in. I believe that as a church and the body of Christ, we are in the time whereby we are preparing for our groom. Our groom, Jesus Christ, is coming back. And let me tell you something, he's coming back for a church, or should I say a bride? Bride without wrinkle and without spot. That is the bride that our groom, our Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Let me tell you something. He is coming back. He is coming back. And I believe that we ought to be ready. And I believe that now is the time for us to understand that the groom wants to come back for that bride, the bride that is ready. He doesn't want to come back like the example of Jesus, the story of the ten virgins, whereby the five were ready and the other ones were not ready. There was no oil in their lamps. It is so important that whatever we do in the times we are in, that everything we do is about preparing for the groom. Because let me tell you something, our Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. And the times we are in are times for preparation. And I believe even on this network, I believe that all the ministers, I, I believe that every minister who comes on this network, believe me or not, they are preparing that bride. They are digging into the word. It's the time for us to dig into the word, to go into those secrets. Uh, because let me tell you something, the groom is coming back for a bride that doesn't have a spot or doesn't have a wrinkle and the times we are in the devil also knows that the groom our king our lord is coming back the devil is not going to rest let me tell you something the devil is not resting right now because he sees the signs he sees the sign of our lord coming we might maybe relax but let me tell you something the kingdom of satan the devil and his forces and his demons and his agents know that their time is short and they are doing everything they can do to press on every side they can press us as children of God. If the devil can make us discouraged, let me tell you something, he will do everything to make you discouraged. If the devil can make you become weak, he will do everything to keep you down. If the devil can do anything, he will do everything he can right now to keep you going slow or even to forget about your aim and your goal and your focus, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is coming back. Let me tell you something. He is coming back, but he is coming back for the bride, for the church, that bride that has no spot 
or without wrinkle. And I believe that in the times we are in, the Lord is, is desiring that we prepare our hearts, that we prepare ourselves for our, our, our King. You know, when I say our King, I just feel, you know, it's so easy for people to call themselves kings, but this is the King of Kings. He is coming back, our King of Kings. Our Lord is coming back, you know. And if there is anything that I, I'm not, I, I want to say, if there's anything that for me makes me look forward to is the coming of our Lord. You know, that excites me. I don't know about you. <laughs> it excites me. It excites me. Every time I'm walking this journey of salvation, my eyes, my, my, my whole, my, should I say my whole excitement is about my groom. My groom is coming back. My king is coming back. So as I bring this topic right now, as we are in this time whereby Christ, um, the Holy Spirit is preparing the bride for the coming of the king of kings. There are so many things that we have to be mindful of. And the first thing that we have to be mindful of is the issue of our heart. It's the matter of our heart. It's the matter of our spiritual being. You know, because so many times right now, and if you look around right now, the enemy is making sure that he can push us left and right, make us so frustrated, make us so angry, make us, you know, everything you look at, the enemy and his forces are out, you know, they are out. If they don't attack you, they are trying to attack your family. If they are not attacking your finances, they are trying to attack your physical body. But you know what? Today, I just felt the Holy Spirit put this on my spirit about the weapons of our warfare, you know about the weapons of our warfare in these times that we are in because the enemy is raging a war. The enemy has come out with all the weapons to fight against the child of God, to fight against the body. And it is so important that we know where our weapons are best and how we ought to fight as the children of God. And let me tell you something. I believe also Dr. Arthur has been handling this uh, very important topic on Fridays. I, I love I love watching and listening in. So you know when I when I when when I felt Friday it is I just felt this topic on my spirit. So I am reading Ephesians chapter six and let me go back to verse ten. You know. And it says here, finally, so can you, you just look at the word finally. So in the end, finally, you know, my brethren, so be strong in the Lord. God is saying to us, do not be strong in your might. Do not be strong in your wisdom. Do not be strong in your finances. Do not be strong in your name. The word of God is saying, be strong in our Lord. Who is our Lord? Our Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to reference. We ought to intentionally look to him. We find our strength, not in our Ourselves. We don't find our strength in our striving, in our trying, in our labor. We find our strength in our Lord. In the times we are in right now, where the enemy is waging a war against the church and against the children of God, we ought to be strong in the Lord. We ought to find our full strength in Him without fail. Let me tell you something. If right now you are feeling weak, tired, Go to him and ask him, Holy Spirit, make me strong. Make me strong. I feel tired. I feel like giving up. I feel like I've been pressed on both sides. Ask him. He is waiting for you to just ask him. He says in his word, ask and you shall be given. So it is so important to find our strength in the times that we are in. It is so important to find our strength in the Lord and in the power of his might. We are finding our strength in our Lord and in the power of his might, not in the power of our might. Okay, however strong you might be, you will not be able to stand the days and the times we are in as a child of God. Let us find our strength in our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that he has given us and is saying, find it in the power. In the power, you hear me? In the power of his might, and that is in his presence. Verse 11, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the enemy. And we know that the enemy is ready. We know that the enemy is charging on every side. We can just look at the physical around us right now. Let me tell you something. You can look at the economies of the world. You can look at anything you want to look at. Let me tell you something. The enemy and his wills are up 
to fight. Verse 12 says to us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the word of God said, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. I want to just hold it there. It is so important to understand that we do not wrestle against men. We do not wrestle against human beings. And let me tell you something, the enemy is going to use a human being to fight you. The enemy, is, it might even be using right now, your partner, right now. The enemy might even use a family member, a friend. The enemy can use the systems of, of government of this world. We don't wrestle, children of God. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You know, in everything that you see, there is an opposite spiritual force that is trying to push it. And it's so important that we learn who we are fighting against. It is so important we learn who we are actually fighting against as children of God. We need to remove human beings and we need to ask God to give us the grace to forgive the human beings because we do not fight against flesh and blood. You do not fight right now against your child right now. You have to see that there is a negative force behind, pushing every way it can to see that you go down, pushing every way you can to put you in a corner, in a place of complaining, in a place of murmuring, in a place of, 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 of being fed up, in a place of giving up. And you have to understand and say to the Lord, Lord, I know it is not her. I know it is not him, but I know there is a force behind it. And let me tell you something. The enemy likes to hide. The enemy wants us to focus on the wrong enemy so that we don't see that there is an enemy behind what we see right now. We are fighting right now against spiritual forces. You know, the word of God has named them. It has named powers. And we need to be in a place whereby when we go to a place of prayer, when we see people, human beings doing whatever, the highest, hardest thing that we are able to ask the Holy Spirit, give me love. Give me the grace to forgive. Give me the grace not hold a grudge because it is not flesh and blood that we fight against. But let me tell you, child of God, it is the enemy, the devil, Satan himself behind all this behind the frustration remove the people you see in front of you remove your partner remove your husband remove your wife remove them for now look at the force behind them number one for now and let me tell you something you will be amazed at what the lord can show you let us learn to understand that there is an enemy behind so many things that we see right now the moment we learn that i assure you i believe we will learn how to pray we will learn not to look for our own solutions, but we will learn to look for the voice of God in everything. We will learn to see God if we are able to see that, you know what, I am not going to blame this person, you know, and it's so important to understand that. I had uh, a lady recently, you know. A friend of mine who was struggling with someone at the workplace and uh, she came to me and she was just very frustrated and she didn't actually really come to me to tell me about that but I saw that she was very frustrated you know I asked her what is the problem and then she's saying you cannot imagine I have the devil himself at my workplace and I said to her the devil himself at your workplace <laughs> and then I asked her what do you mean and then she started describing this specific person and what they are doing and how they are making her <laughs> live in hell. Do you know what hell is? <laughs> you know, I was asking her, do you know what hell is? <laughs> do you know how hellfire, have you even imagined what is going to happen in hell? So anyway, she looks at me and she, of course she doesn't pay attention and she's going on on how this person has done this and that and that and that and the other. And you know what? I looked at her and said to her, let us remove that person. Let us ask the Lord to give you grace to forgive that human being. But I told her, have you asked and asked the Lord to see that behind that person, there is a force, a negative force that wants to push everything they can down. And they are not, and I want to say this again, children of God, they, the enemy does not intend for what we see in the physical. The enemy is just not about your physical comfort. The enemy is beyond. He's looking at spiritual things that your eyes might not even be seeing. You know what I told her? I told her, may the Lord give you grace to see the real enemy. 
because the enemy is not your friend you know and i think it was a week after she comes back and she says yo you cannot believe it. i told her go and ask the lord to give you grace love that person love that human being and you'll be so amazed you will be so surprised that the real enemy is going to become you know so it is going to be revealed and that is what happened and you know what the, eventually she's able to see that actually my real enemy was not this person it was the enemy certain behind it i believe that the times we are in we ought to walk with our eyes spiritually open let us not hate human beings but let us learn to see that we wrestle not against flesh and blood we wrestle not against human beings but we wrestle against spiritual forces that the enemy is putting ahead of us and let me tell you something child of god the enemy is going to do everything they can and i'm saying he can to make sure that you are so pressed that on both sides, on every side, that you actually forget the real enemy. And let me tell you something, we have to understand that this is the enemy, the devil himself, but not what we see in the physical. You know, when the word of God says here, how do we ought to fight? And the word of God says here in uh, verse, verse 13, Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. You know, when the word of God says the, the whole armor of God, it doesn't say take part of it, take some of it, choose which one you feel will work. And the word of God says the whole, the whole armor, like put it on, take it on. And you know, as you are taking on all this, the word of God says also that we find our might, we find our strength, okay, in his power, in our Lord Jesus Christ. It has to start there, okay? So it must start there. So if you are watching me right now, maybe you might get hold of this video. Your whole, whole victory is standing on your faith in Jesus Christ. If you have not received Jesus Christ in your life, I want to say it is time. It is time for you to receive him. It is time for you to let down your weapons so that he can fight for you. It is time for you to understand that he is the only one who can overcome the devil, Satan himself. He is the only one. Let me tell you something. You, you can try all your tricks, all your best, all your knowledge, all your wisdom, all your skills, all your years of experience. He is the only one who can fight and who can have victory. He has already had victory over him. And it's so important also to emphasize on the ones who are watching me right now. You are playing around with Jesus. You, one feet is in the world. One feet is in the Lord. You are just there playing around, playing around. You cannot play around in the enemy's camp at the same time stand with jesus there is no way you can be able to stand you cannot say that you can be in the enemy's camp play netball there football there and then come here in god in jesus christ and also claim you are a child of god because let me tell you something there are two conflicting kingdoms there is a satanic kingdom and there is a god's kingdom and you cannot be in both and win Okay, you cannot be both and win. You are the enemy's playground. He plays as he wants and goes, you know. And it's so important to understand that this scripture here, which is verse 10, starts with we have to stand and find our might in our Lord Jesus Christ, in his power. We have to find it in only Jesus Christ, not anywhere else. And both our feet, our life must be grounded in him, must be founded in him. And I want to emphasize, it is so important important for us to understand that we cannot play with the devil at the same time play with God and think that we will have the full victory and we will have the full promises of God. We cannot put on this full armor here if we, unless we are standing in Jesus Christ, unless we have received him. is the only way, the truth and the life. That is the only way we can be able to see victory, to walk in the spiritual realm and see victory. Yes, we see so many people, they, their lives look like they are fine, but let me tell you something. In the spiritual realm, there is a war. There is a fight 
and the only person who overcame the devil, Satan, Lucifer himself, is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the King of Kings, the Lion of Judah. And there is no any other one. You can call all the other names. I assure you, he is the only way, the truth, and the light. And anyone who would watch me or who will get hold of this video, I want to encourage you to receive Jesus Christ in your life. I want to encourage you to walk on the true foundation, both feet be serious about your walk with Jesus Christ be serious about your salvation that is where you will find your victory when the Lord Jesus comes back he's coming back for a bride without wrinkle without spot and the only way you can have that is when you are washed in the lamb's blood it's only when you are washed in the lamb's blood and that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He cannot be washing you at the same time you are going back to the same dirt. Washing you at the same time you are going back to the same dirt. No way. You have to be washed by the Lamb's blood. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ who was slain, who was sacrificed for us. And you stand in Him. You stay in Him. Okay. You stand in Him. I know we are going to be running out of time but you know what? I will stop where, um, where we can stop. So I am reading right now verse 13 and it's talking about uh we would stand evil we have to stand the word of god said that you should be able to stand in the evil days and having done all stand you know child of god stop fighting for yourself stand in the lord just stand in the lord stand he will fight for you stand stand stop trying to fight for yourself stand in the lord call on the name of jesus and stand verse 14 says stand therefore having your lions guarded about with the truth the truth is the word of god no other truth there is no other truth all the other things are facts they are information but the word of god says you have to stand number one with the truth guarded around you having on the breastplate of righteousness where do we find our righteousness in christ jesus we are able to stand right before our father through our lord jesus christ again here we come for to be able to wrestle against these powers to be able to wrestle against the enemy we have to know the truth stand in the truth guard ourselves in this truth let us not lose the truth of the word of god let's study the truth of the word of god let's speak it when the enemy attacks let's speak it when our family members are attacked by sickness let us speak this truth of the word of God. Let us stop speaking our own words. Oh my goodness, what is going to happen? Uh, yes, the report of the doctors is a report, yes. But what does the report of the word of God says? The word of God says, God, with this truth. So we ought, when the enemy fights, when the enemy attacks our finances, when the enemy attacks our physical bodies, that we stand in the truth. You know, yes, your physical body might be sick, but what is the truth of the word of God. What is the truth? What does it say? By his stripes, I am healed. You know, if the enemy is attacking, let's attack back by the truth of the word of God. It says, guard yourself. You know, you know, guard yourself with this word. Don't allow to lose this word because the enemy is going to attack and is not going to stop attacking us, our families and our loved ones. And it's so important that we guard ourselves with the truth. It is also important as you look here where it's saying righteousness. Verse 15, and your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace that we see Jesus coming to proclaim. Jesus came to proclaim this gospel of peace. He did not come to proclaim the gospel or a war or death. He came to proclaim this gospel of peace. And I want to say this as if we are talking about the gospel of peace. Do you have the peace of the Lord? You know. In this battle that we are in, in the spiritual battle that we are fighting, as we are waiting for our groom, our view, do you have the peace of the Lord? Have the peace of the Lord. Because let me tell you something, the enemy is going to shake you on every side and is going to try and do everything. If he can shake your heart to lose peace, if he can shake your heart to become anxious, fearful, you know, look around us. The whole world is in such a panic, is in such a fear. What differentiates us? What Changes us and differentiates us from the world is the peace that we find in Christ. So, the word of God is saying to be able to have victory and wrestle this enemy and not the flesh, it is the peace. 
the peace of the Lord. It says here also, and when we read verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Faith is beyond hope. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about this faith. Whereby we walk knowingly that our Father, and we have prayed our Father will answer us. We know without a shadow of a doubt that our God has healed us. We know without a shadow of a doubt that our God will take care of us. We know without the shadow of a, of a doubt that our God will protect our homes. Even as we see so much lawlessness around we we enter our homes and we say lord we trust you we have faith that your blood will protect us we ought not to walk fearful even when we are in our cars we say father we will not see a hijacking around us we will not mighty lord even see evil come near us because we have faith that our father is the king of kings he is the lord of lords as the whole world is in so much fear you ought to walk right now when the enemy is attacking to walk saying my faith is in the lord my faith is in my lord jesus christ it says here also which you shall be able with the faith to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Look at this now. There again we are. We are back to the word of God. And I want to finish with verse 18 as I'm looking on time. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching that with all perseverance, supplication for all saints. The word of God is very clear here. Number one is saying we ought to pray. We ought to stay prayerful as we are waiting for our groom who is coming back for us as we are in this warfare, as we are in this time that the enemy is pushing on every side. The word of God is saying we ought to always be praying. Not only praying, the word of God is saying watching, you know, watching, praying in the spirit and also being watchful that we don't sleep that we we don't sleep in a time like this and let me tell you child of god we we cannot afford to sleep <laughs> we cannot afford to sleep in a time like this and the word of god is saying not only do we pray but we also watch so watching is me uh, looking through my house and I'm watching. Number one, what am I watching for? I am watching for the coming of my Lord and Savior. I am also watching the attack of the enemy that I stand strong. I stand strong. It ends by saying with perseverance, we ought to persevere. The challenges that are coming. We ought to persevere the attacks that the enemy is going to bring. The enemy is not going to play. And let me tell you, child of God, the enemy is not playing. The enemy is going to push challenges. He's going to push every temptation he can. He's going to attack left and right. He's going to attack our family members. But the word of God is saying, he's going to attack our lives. The word of God is saying, persevere, stand, persevere in Christ, knowing our Savior is with us, knowing our Savior is watching, knowing our Lord and Savior is coming back for you and me. Father, we thank you, mighty Lord, we bless you, mighty King of glory, for your grace and for your goodness, mighty Lord. Even as we are in the time whereby the enemy and his forces have risen to fight on every side in the nations of the world, mighty Father. We pray, mighty King of glory, that us, your children, mighty Lord, will find our strength in you. We'll find our strength in you, mighty Lord. We will find our strength in the might of your power, mighty King of glory. We will stand, mighty Father in your truth, in the foundation of your truth, mighty God. We pray that we will be able, mighty Father, not to sleep in a time like this, but we also pray, Holy Spirit, that you prepare us for the time, for the coming of our groom. Prepare us, Holy Spirit, help us and teach us daily to be alert for the coming of our groom, that we don't miss the coming of our groom, mighty Father. I thank you, King of glory, for your grace and your goodness. I thank you, mighty Lord, Lord, that as we walk in these times, mighty Lord, we stay watchful, we stay prayerful, and we stay founded on your word. For we know, mighty Father, we will not fight. You will fight for us, mighty King of glory. 
in the name of our lord jesus christ we pray amen i just want to take just one minute just one minute and just pray for that person right now that person maybe you will watch this maybe you are watching right now and you you you, you know I've, I've said something about one feet is out there and one feet is up here and right now one feet is in the lord and one feet is in the enemy's camp am i saying one feet in the world and one feet in god right now if you are watching me i know you are saying in your spirit but how can i do this i have tried on my own i have failed i want to pray this prayer with you and i believe that the lord has brought this word in season and in time and as i'm praying right now i know that the holy spirit is giving you victory over what has been overcoming you to take you back to that habit i see someone watching me right now you are under an addiction you are struggling with an addiction and you have been asking the lord lord help me i want to live righteously i want to live right in christ i want to see my testimony but why is it that it's so hard for me to go off this addiction and I see it's addiction of alcohol. Right now, Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, that King of glory, the people that you see, you see that person's heart. You see your people's heart, mighty Father. I declare right now, mighty Lord, as they are watching me, mighty King of glory, that you touch that person's heart, oh God. You see their tears. You see their heart. You see how much they have tried on their own, mighty Father. But I pray, mighty Lord, right now, that the trying and the laboring by their own stops now in the mighty name of of Jesus. Mighty Lord, right now they surrender their lives to you, mighty Father. They surrender their hold to you, mighty Lord. You are able to serve, mighty King of glory, as you say in your word that you draw us to your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you will draw that person to Jesus Christ. I pray, mighty King of glory, that right now as I'm speaking, every addiction is broken off their life, mighty Lord. Every hold of the enemy is broken off their life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every powers of darkness and and every confidence that the enemy made and claim of the enemy upon their life mighty lord is broken right now in the name of jesus mighty king of glory i declare freedom freedom that comes through jesus christ for you say in your word we overcame him by the word of our testimony and by the lamb by the blood of the lamb mighty lord i pray for victory today mighty lord that person is redeemed today that person is free and today they serve you and serve you alone walk by you alone today they get mighty Lord, the freedom, the victory to walk and to walk in you, mighty Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, mighty Lord. Have a blessed evening, everyone. And the person I've just prayed for, I know and I believe that God has heard your prayer from today. Walk with him. From today, walk away from some friends. I see you have certain friends that are always, you always going back to them. They are always coming back to you. Separate yourself from these friends. Let me tell you something. Christ is coming back for a bride without a spot or without a wrinkle. God bless you. Have a beautiful evening. Amen.